time for news and sport from borders with David Knox. Good afternoon. A 22-year-old Gala Shields man has been found guilty after a three-day jury trial of having sexual intercourse with a girl who was under 16. Thomas Rennick was also convicted of sexually assaulting a child under the age of 13 in Kelso, as well as communicating indecently with her. Sentence was deferred until next month at Selkirk Sheriff Court for the production of reports and he was granted bail. Scottish Fire and Rescue say that a blaze in Jedra this morning has now been brought under control. A wooden outbuilding on the Pleasance was well alight when crews arrived just before 11am. The road around the old grammar school was cro- closed briefly while the fire was being extinguished. A former leader of Scottish Borders Council has been expelled from the Scottish Green Party over his views on the Middle East. David Ferguson has the details. John Ross Scott left the Borders almost two decades ago to take up a journalism position after losing his hoik seat at Scottish Borders Council. He switched allegiance from the Liberal Democrats to the Scottish National Party as he campaigned on islands for independence and made a return to politics representing Kirkwall East. In 2021, the former Scottish Borders Council leader joined the Scottish Greens and reclaimed his seat on Orkney Council the following year. But his views on the Middle East are at odds with the Scottish Greens leadership. And this came to a head last month when he took to social media to say that he believed Hamas and Hezbollah should both be regarded as terrorist organisations. He was expelled from the party while on holiday and says he now intends to appeal. Scottish Power Energy Network has further extended the consultation period for its controversial cross-border connection, which plans around 50 miles of giant pylons to carry wind farm energy to the English border. The latest extension until December the 23rd follows a meeting between Spen and Scottish Borders Council's Chief Executive David Robertson and leader Ewan Jardin. While health bosses across the country battle to bring down waiting times and lists, a new social work project in the borders is producing remarkable results. In March, there were 650 people waiting on social work assessments, with many having waited for more than a year. But the expansion uh, expansion and refreshing of the region's seven What Matters hubs during the same month has brought the waiting list to below 100, with few of them waiting for more than two weeks. Chris Myers, the chief of officer of the Borders Health and Social Care Partnership is delighted with the community-led support project. We've got a, a really great model in the Borders. In fact, we're, we're UK leading on, on community-led support. So um, you'll, you'll be aware of our What Matters hubs that we have across the Borders in a number of public locations. Uh, what, what those are, our front door to the Health and Social Care Partnership into statutory services and non-statutory supports for people. And uh, we'd, we'd encourage people to get along if they need any type of support to one of our Local businesses were celebrating over the weekend after success at the Scottish Thistle Awards. The awards celebrate excellence in the tourism and events industry with a focus on the local economy. The Trimontia Museum in Melrose won the Inclusive Tourism Award, while the Cross Keys in in Ettrick Bridge was voted Scotland's best bar or pub. Well done. An estate near Jedburgh is again being transformed into a winter wonderland this Christmas. The brainchild of the late Lord Lothian, the Monteviat Lights illuminated trail around the estate gardens and woodlands was a huge hit last winter. And the enchanting light displays, atmospheric soundtracks and festive food village will again await visitors from Friday, December the 6th. Pyro musical director Serena Foyle is one of the Monteviat Lights designers. It's a very special garden for a start. I mean, it's a wonderful kind of canvas, if you like, be working with um but uh, apart from anything else it's the first um trail of its kind event of this kind in the borders especially during the winter months when things are a bit quieter it's really the kind of the only major uh, winter event in the borders tiny sport now and while all local rugby matches were called off scotland's test against australia did beat the weekend's weather and gregor townsend's team ran out 27 13 victors yesterday hoyks darcy graham and rory sutherland were part of the winning team which townsend believes owed much to the growing experience across his squad i believe that must be our highest cap selection and so it was close to 700 and obviously another 15 caps today or more so yeah and i can't remember a time when we've had around 700 caps 
And then look, the squad has been settled, give or take a few injuries. So players are playing together as well. So it's not just their individual cap numbers. Got another player of 50 caps today. Finn got to 82 caps today. Like there's there's a lot of experience around. But it's also the fact they're playing together and they're sharing these experiences, which will be really important for the future. And the racing hot jockey Craig Nickel rode Lucinda Russell train favourite Derry Hassan Paddy to victory at Utoxeter yesterday. Well done. Now for the borders weather with all the details, here's Julius. Hello there. This afternoon will continue very windy with sunny spells and scattered showers feeding in from the west. Highs of 6 to 9 Celsius. Tonight will start cloudy with spells of rain spreading southwards. By the early hours it will turn dry and clear spells will develop. Easing winds, lows of 1 to 4 Celsius with a touch of ground frost. A colder day tomorrow, it will be dry, however, with sunny spells, but highs of just 4 to 7 Celsius. BBC Radio Scotland weather for the borders. We'll be back with more news and sport for the borders at half past four. On digital radio, BBC Sounds and your smart speaker, play BBC Radio Scotland. Now let's return to the weather. Much of Scotland, as we've been hearing, has been battered by high winds and heavy rain over three days by Storm Bert. Claire Nazir is Senior Meteorologist at the Met Office. Uh, Claire, thanks for coming on to the programme. Um, what's the picture like now across the UK? Um, across the UK, a lot of places still seeing flooding from that rain. I mean, we saw the heaviest rain across England and Wales down towards the southwest in excess of 160, 170 millimetres. That's pretty much a sort of six weeks to two months worth of rain there. Uh, and uh, there's a warning, um, as Gillian said, across the northwest highlands uh, where we're seeing more snow melt. So a lot of water just flowing down the hills and, and causing problems on the roads. So at the risk of flooding here. So we're not out of the woods yet and the recovery period for, for many areas where we have seen that flooding is going to continue where properties have been flooded and damaged. Yeah, I think there were 150 flood warnings out. Is that still the picture? Yes, I mean, uh, this is the thing. There's normally a lag time from where the rain falls to where it lands later um, across catchment areas. I was in Wales yesterday and it was a real struggle to get home back to the northwest of England. A lot of uh, surface water, some cars could not get through. There were roads, my roads in particular, flooded. And it was it was horrible, actually. It was a really very unpleasant journey. And I'm sure a lot of the other people experienced that through the last few days. Yeah, we've also had significant disruption, haven't we, from snow and high winds? Yes, absolutely. I mean, the, the rain when it came in on um, Saturday morning turned to snow, particularly over the high ground of Scotland and Pennines. Um, so we saw up to about 15 centimetres. Then the temperatures rose, and this has been the problem, is really the combination of the, the heavy rain and also snow melt causing, causing that flooding. In terms of winds, we saw some very strong winds across the highest ground, so the Cairngorms as well as Snowdonia. Um, uh, generally speaking, I think, uh, let's have a look here. We saw around 60 knots in terms of gusts for places such as Turee and Islay. So winds were significant, and obviously there were some high waves. But really, the focus of the weather was on the amount of rain and, and snow turning back to water. And is that the worst of it over now? Yes, it is. I mean, you know, Gillian's talking about this rain today. It is easing tomorrow, which is good news. And then we resume high pressure, which is great. It does mean by night, yet again, we're going to see some low temperatures. I mean, uh, at the end of last week, Kimbrace saw a minus 12.4. So we have seen bitter air and, and snow and ice. And we resume these widespread frosts for the middle to the latter part of the week. And then some rain will try and come in. But actually, the early part of December is looking looking with anti-cyclonic uh, weather which means things are, are fairly quiet so we will be able to recover from the storm but obviously it's never the end of the story we're just coming into the beginning of winter some good news for now though Claire mm -hmm. thank you very much thank indeed you. that's Claire Nazir from the Met Office the case of brothers Lyle and Eric Menendez is calling in a court in Los Angeles today as part of a series of hearings which could result in their freedom. They were convicted of murdering their parents in Beverly Hills in one of the highest profile trials of the 1990s. Their story has gained a new audience through the drama series Monsters, which delved into claims that the brothers were being abused by their parents. Andrea Jarman is a US law expert and told me more. The case really has everything. So, first of all, I had a very dramatic killing, which is two very wealthy young men 
um, killed their parents. So parricide doesn't happen very often. So the crime itself is dramatic. And then the, the trial was actually one of the first on court TV. Um, so everyone in the country could watch every single day of the trial. And then at trial, the defense was raised that the boys had endured sexual abuse by their father. So that was all televised and people followed that. Um, so it, the, so there's lots of fascinating things. Then more recently, a young man who's in a boy band has claimed that their father sexually abused, indeed drugged and raped him. Um, so it is a story that has boy bands, it's got celebrity, it's a very dramatic, a brutal killing. Um, so it's got it all, really. So today this case is calling uh, at a court in, in Los Angeles. Uh, what uh, What's going to be happening with it? Yes. So today what's happening is that the district attorney filed a motion for resentencing. So the boys young men now of course they were in their 20s when they went to prison they're now in their 50s the men the boys were sentenced to or the young men were sentenced to life imprisonment without parole the district attorney has filed a motion where they would be sentenced for murder so it's still murder but for 50 years to life and what that would mean is because they committed the crime when they were under 26, they would be subject to the parole board immediately um, able to be released from prison. So they would immediately be able to be released. So that's the hearing today. But there's a lot of politics in this story. I said it had it all. So the district attorney that filed that motion is not going to be the district attorney on December 2nd. Indeed, it was said the reason he did this was for political motives in advance of the election. There will be a new district attorney on December 2nd, and he is not as pro-release. And what he said is he needs to go over to review the transcripts of the trial to see and all the other evidence to see whether or not he will continue to support a motion to resentence. Um, so today, very little is going to happen. There's a hearing in that case. There's meant to be a hearing on December 11th and probably the, new, the DA elect um, will say that he isn't ready to proceed on December 11th. He might be, um, but it's unlikely. So today will be a very short hearing the brothers will appear by video link and uh, not much will happen. Having said that, it's the hottest ticket in town. They're doing a lottery for the 13 seats in the courtroom. That's uh, Andrea Jarman there with the latest on the Menendez brothers case. Now, one of Britain's most successful authors, Barbara Taylor Bradford, has died. She was 91. Her debut book, A Woman of Substance, remains one of the biggest selling novels of all time. Charlotte Gallagher looks back at her life. The documents must be irreversible, irrevocable, watertight. I must be absolutely A woman sure of substance was and is a sensation. The novel has sold more than 30 million copies and the television adaptation pulled in record audiences. Its main character, Emma Hart, is a Yorkshire woman who rises from humble beginnings to become hugely successful. And in some ways, that mirrors the author's own life. Born in Leeds in 1950,